Tatpadam darshitam yena tasmai sri gurave namaha pameva mata chapita pameva pameva bandhu sasakha pameva Tvameva Vedya Dravitnam Tvameva Tvameva Sarvam Mamadeva Deva Tvameva Sarvam Mamadeva Deva Jai Guru Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahabiryam Karavavahai, Ejasvinavadhi Tamastuma Vidvishavahai, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So, what verse are we on? Starting verse 143 tonight. Verse 143. And will you help us out, please, Ganesh? The powers, agitating and veiling. Kavalita dina nathe durdina sandra meghai vyathayati hima janja vayurukro yathaitan avirata tamasatman yavrite mudha buddhim shapayati bahudai shapayati bahudukhai Dukhai stivra vikshepa shaktihi. Just as on a cloudy day when the sun is swallowed up by dense clouds, cold shivering um, by dense clouds, cold shivering blasts persecute man, so too when the Atman is screened off by utter ignorance, the dreadful projecting power vikshepa shakti persecutes the foolish man with endless sorrows. Yes. So we've been talking about <clears throat> the two powers that a vasana has. Let's review this. A vasana is an impression. That's an egocentric impression. When it's we engage in the world with I-ness and minus, and then after the fact, I engage in chintya. I reflect on the past event. Oh, that was just wonderful. Or, oh, that was terrible. I never do that again. That leaves a subtle impression. And last week, Shankar used the image of the silkworm being cocooned. So it is the mind that gets cocooned by this vasana bundle. And the vasana has two powers. Veiling power, avarana shakti or avritti. 
meaning I do not know who I am. It's a spiritual sleep. Then the second power is Vikshepa Shakti. The root is Kshipshipati, which means to like hurl or throw a spear. It goes out. And what is it that the mind projects? The mind projects the physical body and the subtle body and the ego sense identified with it. And then it projects the belief that there's a world of name and form separate from consciousness with inherently joy-giving and misery-producing powers. This is the rajas, the agitating power of the vikshepa shakti. That's where my suffering comes from. That's where my suffering comes from. Now, just like in reality, the overcast sky and the clouds never touch the sun. The sun's just shining away. But I, who am subject to the clouds, <laughs> it's cold and rainy. So also, in reality, spiritual ignorance and the subsequent projections really never even veil the self. It's so bizarre. Talk to someone, are you enlightened? No, I'm not enlightened. You're full of ignorance. Oh, yes, I'm so ignorant. Do you know that you're ignorant? Yes, I know I'm ignorant. Do you exist? Yes, I exist. What's your ignorance? Misery. That person still knows I am. They are conscious of their miserable mind. But just like the orb and the heat of the sun are occluded when the clouds are there. So the infinite nature of the self and the fact that it is the fountainhead of all joy is veiled from the mind. So those two powers, veiling power, projecting power. The non-apprehension of my essential nature and then the subsequent misapprehension, not only of myself, but of the world. Any thoughts on this? Now, when I'm in the state of ignorance, how do I know I'm in the state of ignorance? I feel like a person. I feel like I'm Jim or Mike, or Mark. Once I'm in that state, ego then says, solve the ego's problems, meaning there's some goal and I got a furrow toward it. And that seems so real. I need more money. I need to get a <laughs> spouse. I need to get rid of the spouse. I need a job. I need to get rid of the job. I need a house. I need to get rid of my house. The politics are bad. The weather is wrong. There's always a goal. I was talking with a friend this morning. We have a mutual friend. Really smart kid. And he's pretty materialistic. And he was convinced if I just get the high paying job and I get the husband and I buy a house, I'll be happy. In the Bay Area, those are not necessarily easy things to do right away. So he's worked, 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 and worked. Oh, and then he lost 40 pounds and was working out. He did that too. 
And he got all these things. And now he's angry and depressed. Guess why? It didn't fix the problem. So as long as we have a goal out there, we can labor under the romantic delusion. That's what's going to do. But if we look to our direct experience, it may be better for a bit, but there's always more problems when I'm attached and identified. Not so much that it's better, it's just different. So yoga says, rather than resolve the struggle of ego, endeavor to drop the struggle. Go home, who am I? To whom is all this craziness in this, uh, occurring? To me, who am I? Stop, introvert the attentive faculty. See if you can notice, who am I? Oh, that's right. And the space of pure consciousness. There is no me there, no individuality. It doesn't need to be improved or fixed. Let go, let go. Any questions about this practice? How it's, we get the sense of it initially in our meditation seat, but vasana, shows up for us in my life. In fact, it's the vasanas that draw the people, places, and things to me where I have identification and attachment. And if we miss it, we don't do the renunciation, the letting go, the don't worry, the Lord will bring it around again, and I can prove it to you. Who got upset this week? Tell me this is the first time you felt this way. If you're like all the rest of us, it's the same damn issue, only the names and faces change. I guess where the issue is. It's never out there. Next verse. Eta bhyam eva shakti bhyam bandhaf pumsa samagata ya bhyam bimohito deham matvatmanam brahmatyayam. Man's bondage has sprung forth from these two powers. Deluded by them, he mistakes his body for the self and wanders from life to life. Yes. So, what is the body? The body is an instrument for garnering experience and satisfying desires. It's a vehicle. So, if I want to go from San Francisco to Hawaii, I can take a boat or a plane. I can't take a car or a train. Wrong vehicle. If on the other hand, I want to go to Las Vegas, I can take a plane, I can take a train, I can take a bus, I can drive, but I can't take a boat. Wrong vehicle. So we come into this life Subtle body and incarnates. Why? To garner experience and to satisfy desire. The deeply rooted notion. Well, 
maybe this time I'll try this, that, and the other thing. And what the scriptures would say is, oh God, you had millions of life, lives. You've been mothers, you've been fathers, you've been brothers, you've been sisters, you've been rich, you've been poor, you've been aristocratic, you've been lowly. Frankly, by the time you get to yoga, you've done it all. But the cause of my transmigration. Now, you do not need to believe in reincarnation to get value from this principle. So, Mike, where did you grow up? Uh, Sherville, Indiana. And where did you go to college? Uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. And why did you go from Sherrod to Indianapolis? Um, to go to college. And why did you want to go to college? Um, to get an education. You desired get a better job. it. Yeah. You desired it. So you had an incarnation at home, rural area or a city? Suburb. Suburb. And then you went to Indianapolis. And then where'd you go after school? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis. And why? For a job. For a job. That was another incarnation. What brought you to the Bay Area? Desire for freedom. Yeah. <laughs> See, so all these different circumstances, different environments, different people, different ways of being in the world, all based. And Mike's journey is not unique to him. I mean, just the people and the places and the situations are unique. But the process is the same. I'll be happy when, better if, this is going to improve things. This is my next goal, my ambition. This is what I need in order to be happy. Nothing wrong with this. This is how the Lord keeps the universe going. Because of the Lord's Maya Shakti. But it is the essence of my bondage. The fool thinks the way to be happy is to finally get the right combination of circumstances. And we try that paradigm for lifetimes until finally we begin to get intimations maybe as the master Jesus says my kingdom is not in this world maybe there's a spiritual solution and then we go through all sorts of experiments with that Till we begin to see that it's about abandoning attachment, abandoning that personal sense of self. I think we've talked about this from a literary standpoint. Whenever Shankara makes a list, Usually, what he says first is the most important. So, going back to the qualifications of a fit student, we don't become a fit student and then go through another process of self realization. All of yoga is becoming a fit student. When you're a fit student, knowledge is like a piece of fruit dropping in your palm. What's the first thing? Viveka, that firm conviction in the intellect. That Brahman, God, alone is real. And the phenomenal world is anitya. Swamiji translates that as unreal. More literally is not eternal. Brahma satyam jagan mitya. The phenomenal world is illusory. 
reading a Buddhist text with someone this morning, and they have that old adage uh, about shunyata, emptiness. Form is empty, and emptiness is form. Very interesting conundrum. The first part. Stuff in the world is essentially neutral. We superimpose. I like this, I don't like that. Vairagya, second one, that desire to give it up attachment to all experiences gained through the senses. And all identification with any form of self. That's the work to do. That's it. This is the burning up, the removal of vasana. How do I know I'm under the influence of vasana? Because I think I'm a person. On the other hand, I'm having the experience, oh, I'm just the witnessing consciousness, watching the body, mind, intellect go through its silliness. At that moment, my mind is freed from the influence of thoughts. Any thoughts on this? And our capacity for illusion and delusion is amazing. I was talking with a woman last week. And she'd come back from a funeral where her 23-year-old stepson had died of a fentanyl overdose. And she was telling me that she had to be hospitalized. She almost drowned because she got drunk. Mm -hmm. I have no idea if it was in the bathtub or what. But they sent her to detox. You don't send people to detox just for having a few too many. Mm -hmm. And currently she's smoking marijuana every day and she's doing her best to cut down on her drinking. Totally unable to see even with the experience of the death of her child. But I need this. I really need this. That's what the mind says. Swami Tejo Mayananda used to tell this story about the Swami who was going to dinner at the home of some people in the Chinmaya mission. And in the Chinmai mission, they have the custom of um, bhiksha. Uh, bhiksha, bhiksha. Bhikshu is a beggar. Bhikshu is when you give food to a, a, an ascetic. But what it's come to mean, you have the swami over for dinner, you feed him. And then at the end, there's a tali, you know, the, the metal dish. There's usually some fruit in it. And there's an envelope with a check in it. And you give that to the swami. The swami puts it in his pocket. Gives you the fruit back as prasad. It's a tradition. And the householder says to the Swami, Oh, Swami, you've done such a great thing. You have given up the world. And the Swami then gets down and pranams and touches the feet of the householder. And he goes, No, 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 Swami. And the Swami says, Oh, no. You are the greater renunciant. I have given up the world, but you have given up the <laughs> infinite bliss. <laughs> Wonderful story. So, if I feel like a person, I'm deluded. I'm under the throes of a Varana Shakti. The Vikshepa Shakti has created this Jiva Bhavana, this feeling that I'm an individual. Simultaneously with that is a goal and a struggle. 
That's that triangle of my misery. When I'm deluded, it seems really real. Any thoughts? Next one. Bijam Santriti Bhumi Jasya Tutamo Tehat Madhira Ankuro Raga Pallavambu Karma Tupapuhu Skandho Sava Shakika Agrani Indraya Samhatishcha Vishaya Pushpani Tukham Palam Nana Karma Samudbhavam Bahuvidham Bhoktatra Jeeva Khaga Ignorance is the seed for the tree of Sansa. The body identification is the sprout. Desires are its tender leaves. Work is its water. The body is its trunk. The pranas are its branches. The sense organs are its twigs. The sense objects are its flowers. Different miseries born out of the varieties of actions are the fruits. And the individual jiva is the bird perched upon it. Yes. So this is a metaphor taken directly from the Upanishads. The Ashwata tree, the tree of life. And here is the progression of the world. And ignorance is the seed. And remember, the solution to ignorance is never action. I'm thinking of a song lyric. How many jumping jacks do you have to do in order to know it? How many times must you run around the block? How many push-ups do you need to do? You ask me. You inquire. You investigate. But you and I, we think the solution to my problem is action. Never works. It's like the room that is dark and the king who wakes up, he calls the ministers to bring brooms to sweep out the darkness. Won't work. It's a long solution. Attempts to improve my life or build up or secure ego are best tempted. Solve the problem, which is to remove the ignorance. Next verse. Agnana Mulo Yanatma Bandho Naisargiko Nadiranta Irita Janmapya Pyadi Jaradi Dukha Pravaha Patam Janayatya Mushya this bondage caused by the not-self springs from ignorance and is self-caused. It is described as without beginning and without end. It subjects one to the endless flood of miseries, birth, death, disease, and senility. Yes. So I'm going to push back a bit on Shankara. It is without beginning, but it does have an end. But this bondage has as its source ignorance. 
Now, there are all sorts of ways of looking at the beginningless nature of ignorance. So I'm thinking of an arithmetic problem. Mike asked me what the problem is. What's the problem? Two plus two is equal to four. Now do you know? Yes. For how long did you not know what I was thinking? Forever until I asked. Yes, it was beginningless. Then you inquired and got an answer. Mm -hmm. Another way to look at the beginningless nature of ignorance we get a taste of it in the dream. So if Mike were sleeping on my couch and I looked at him and he was sleeping soundly and then all of a sudden his eyes started to go back and forth what they call rapid eye movement, REM. I would say, oh, he's dreaming. And maybe it would last a minute, minute and a half. Inside the dream, though, it's not like a movie. They never roll the credits at the beginning of the dream. Part of the nature of the dream is the mind projects an unexamined assume cause and effect. Almost never do I ever question, how did I get from my bed to this circumstance? The dream is beginningless. You have no apprehension of the beginning of the dream. When you wake up, you have an end. Do you understand what I mean by the psychological experience of no beginning of the dream? Yes? No? Mm -hmm. Spiritual ignorance is the same way. You can have a really deep meditation, very clear about the no thingness of my self nature. Come to class, get all tuned up. But then somewhere between the time you leave here and you get up for work tomorrow, that small self came back. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And you never see it happen. Mm -hmm. It's beginningless. That's the nature of ignorance. You can't see its beginning. It is like the dream. Its nature is you just assume I've always been Jim. Once I'm Jim, just like when I'm the dreamer, the problems of the dream seem So if we can just remember, if I think I'm a person, I'm dreaming spiritually. Yeah. Now, macrocosmically, Maya, that infinite power of the Lord by which this whole universe comes about. It has no beginning and it has no end. Just because you or I realize the self doesn't mean the world stops. But you and I can exercise our escape Step out from the funny farm of Sansa.
Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Atman and uh, Anatman, discrimination. Nastrayana, Shastrayana, Nilena, Pahnina, Chetum, Shakyona, Chakarma, Koti, Bihi, Viveka, Vignana, Viveka, Vignana, Mahasina, Dina, Tatu, Prasadena, Sitena, Manjuna. Neither by weapons, nor by wind, nor by fire, nor by millions of actions can this bondage be destroyed. By nothing save the wonder sword of knowledge which comes from the discrimination, which comes from discrimination and is sharpened by the purification of the mind and the intellect can we end this bondage. So the wonder sword of knowledge, if you go look in the dining room here and you look on that uh, wall right next to the window uh, uh, that separates the living room from the dining room. You'll see a painting of the uh, Tibetan Buddhist god Manjushri. And above his head, he has the wonder sword of knowledge, of discrimination. So, sacred baths won't do it. Asana postures won't do it. Chanting mantras won't do it. Running off to the Himalayas won't do it. We have preliminary actions which help us purify and quiet in the mind, but they're fundamentally preliminary. Then, Investigate. Atma anatma vivechana. Investigate. Discriminate between the self and the not self. If it has a beginning and an end, if it occurs in time and space, if it has qualities and characteristics, if it's confined to the waking dream or deep sleep state, and most importantly, if it is an object of cognition, that's not it. So to practice it, do you see the water glass here? Yes. Are you a water glass? No. Not self. Do you see the bowl on the table? Are you a bowl? No. Not self. We can go through all of the uh, objects perceived by the five outer senses. We go to the body itself. We went through this, the stula sharira. Take a deep breath. Do you not know the breath in the body? Do you have any aches and pains going on this, this evening? Yes. Now, aren't you aware of the aches and pains? Mm -hmm. You know them the same way you know the water glass. Now, listen carefully. Knowing you are not the body doesn't make the pains in the body go away. It's not, it's not a, a, a fix it. Mm -hmm. Looking to see what's true. What's your energy level like tonight? Pretty low. Yeah. Are you aware of the low energy? Mm -hmm. We're talking about your 60 hour work. I to crack, but I'm aware of the fatigue and the low energy. Feelings, sorrow, joy, boredom, enthusiasm, depression, happiness. It's like the palette of a painter. 
all these colors, which are a human being's feelings. But whatever the feelings are, not self. I am the knower. And finally, to the realm of thought. Do the problem two plus two in your hand. Remember what you had for breakfast. That place is the intellect. The thoughts go by like your hand in front of your face. But who knows the thought? And the space between the things. That's the same. So, this constant attempt throughout the day in my meditation seat to renounce my identity identification with the not self and to renounce the stupid struggles. Now that doesn't mean we don't act, but we give up egoistic action. What's an egoistic action? If I do this, this is going to fix stuff. It's going to make it better. It's going to solve my problems. No, well, you do what's in front of you. Doesn't mean we don't enjoy, but we don't get attached. Any thoughts on the summation of this whole process? Next verse. Kuti Pramane Kamate Svadharmanishta Tayevatma Vishuddhirasya Vishuddha Buddhe Paramatma Vedanam Teneva Samsara Samula Nasha He who has deep devotion to the Shrutis and who is established in his Svadharma, for these alone contribute to the purity of one's mind and is of pure mind, realizes the Supreme Self. By this knowledge alone is sansar destroyed, root and branch. But this knowledge alone what? Is sansar destroyed, root and branch. Oh, by this knowledge alone. Okay, so here he tells us that, yes, first thing we need to do is gain some purity of mind. How do we do that? through study of the scriptures, being devoted to them. Going through the various exercises that we've had to purify the head and heart, becoming a fit student. And when he says being established in our Swadharma, this is an idea that he is um, gathered from Gita for those of us who are fighting the flow of our lives yoga becomes difficult unless you're a wealthy person or you've taken religious vows most of us have to work for a living. And if you want more teaching on Swadharma, I point you to Gita chapters 3, 4, and 5. Basically, you have a right to work at something you love. And if right now you're not, then we work on loving what we're working at. But we want to give up. I'm going to do this just because of the fat paycheck. 
or I'm going to do that just because it's a fancy title. Serve the society. Once we ride the horse in the direction it's going, life becomes a lot easier. I liked uh, the story of the great uh, 20th century saint, Nisargadat Maharaj, who came from, you know, an agrarian family. And then he moved to Mumbai and he, he had a family with kids. And then, you know, he had a, a beauty shop, some cigarettes. And at one point in his sadhana, he decided he's going to go off to the Himalayas to be an ascetic. But it wasn't his swadharma. He came back to Mumbai and he ran his beauty shop. He lived above the shop and gave satsang there. He did not leave his swadharma. Others of us have different ones. Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi, from a priest class who had a beginning of a European education, English education, at the age of 16. No, that's not my Swadharma. So he goes traipsing off to Arunachala. Lived in silence for 11 years in the crypt of a temple and finally went to live in a cave on the hill. Just a loin cloth. But the style of living is not what's going to make you holy or illuminate. Follow your Swadharma. And then attain Buddhi Shuddha, your mind. Then engage in self. That's the suggestion. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Koshayranamayadhyayi Pancha Bhiratmana Samrito Bhati Nija Shaktim Nija Shakti Samut Pannaihi Shaivala Patalai Kivambu Vapistham Covered by the five sheets, such as the food sheet, which are produced by its own divine power, the self ceases to appear, just as the water in a tank ceases to appear due to the collection of moss, which is born out of itself. Yes. So the metaphor is this. In South India, uh, if you go out to the villages, like in Kerala, what you have near the village is usually a, a stream or a river. And what the villagers have done over the centuries is build what they call tanks, which are these kind of uh, rectangular shaped pools. They're usually stepped. And the top one is where you have the potable water, and then uh, beneath that is, uh, help me out here, Ganesh. What, what, what is the second one and the third one? I can't remember. I don't know, Jim. I've not been to a village. <laughs> <laughs> I think you bathe uh, for bathing or washing clothes. And, and anyway, there's, there's three levels. But the potable water is the top one. And what happens is there's algae in the tank and they leave the algae there. And there was a period in India where they decided that they were gonna clean, uh, you know, put a fungicide or not, a, 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 you know, they were gonna kill all the algae. And as soon as they killed all the algae, guess what happened to the water? Bacteria grew and everybody got sick. Mm. So nature, the algae, 
eats the bacteria, keeps the water pure. So the ladies come down from the village with these great big, huge jars. And then they set the jars down and then they splash the water. Then the algae recedes, then they get the potable water and then they head back to the village. And then the algae comes back. So that's the metaphor that Shankar is using. So in so many different cultures, water is a great metaphor for consciousness. And here, the algae, the moss, that covers the glory of the self in my mind is the existence of and my identification with the pancha kosha. Pancha means five, kosha means a sheath, sheath like a like lemongrass or like an onion cut. Now, practically speaking, what we're doing is he's going to go through another scriptural paradigm, another map. We had one already where we had the three bodies, stula sharira, gross body, sukshma sharira, subtle body, karana sharira, causal body. These are just two different maps. This one breaks it down into five rather than three. So now we're going to start our investigation. Now, why are we going through all this examination of, of this stuff? There's a purpose, and the purpose is this. If I can clearly see what I am not, I can let it go. If I'm unconscious and I'm confusing the not self with the self, then in my mind I'm all tangled up. Um, you get a bad review at work or a colleague criticizes you terribly. Most of us have had an experience like that. But if I think I'm the doer, the agent, I'm identified with the activities of the body, then when someone says stuff like that, it stings. Then what do I want to do? I want to protect, secure, and defend self. Because I think I'm a solid thing called Jim. That's where the suffering comes from. So when I can see what I am not, that I can begin to let it. So now we start on our journey through the Pancha Kosha. So help us out, Ganesh. This is funny stuff. Pachai vala panaye samyak salilam pratiyate shuddham trishna santapa haram satyaha Saukya Pradham Param Pumsa. When the moss is removed, absolutely pure water, which can quench the pangs of thirst and give immediate joy, becomes visible. Yes, yeah, so the idea here is when the moss of ignorance is removed, 
the ananda of the self can quench my ulcerated mind. And I can drink deep of the brahmananda rasa, the juice of the bliss of Next verse. Panchanam api koshanam apavade vibhatya yam shuddhaha nityanandaika rasa pratya grupa parama swayam jyoti. When all five sheets have been negated, the self is appreh apprehended as being the essence of everlasting bliss as the indwelling self-effulgent spirit supreme. Yes. So it's not that I'm a zero. And when I negate the five sheaths, there's nothing left. I'm nothing. We are no thing. But just like the process we did earlier, I am not any phenomenal object. I'm not the body. I'm not the feelings. I'm not the thoughts. That's the shorthand form we did. Now we're going to go into much more subtle forms that we are apt to get identified with. And the residual, the remnant, what's left over which is never negatable. Um, that's who I am. That's what's me. Next verse. Atman atma viveka karta vyobandha mukta ye vidusha tenei vanan tenei vanandi bhavati svam vignaya sanchidanandam The wise man should discriminate between the self and the not-self in order to remove the bondage. Only then does he know his own self to be absolute existence, knowledge, bliss. Only then does he become happy. Yes. So, notice that Shankara has done, what, at least three verses now? Saying the same idea in slightly different words. Another literary device. When Shankara repeats an idea more than once, wake up, it means it's really important. So this is primary meditative technique in our tradition, the jnana yoga tradition. The vigilance required to constantly discriminate between the self and the non-self. Now, it takes a subtle mind to do this. When I was in the ashram, we would be taught this technique. And then someone would say, well, what about being a vegan as opposed to a vegetarian? Yeah, okay. But people would miss the point. Discrimination between the cell and the not cell. And then drop. 
attachment and my identification, the non-self. Next verse. Munja dishi kamiva drishya vargat pratyancha matmanam asanga asanga makriyam vivichya tatra pravilapya sarvam tadat manatishthati ya samukta. He who separates all sense objects perceived, felt, and thought of from the subjective, unattached, actionless self. Like the en envel enveloping sheets separated from the core of the munja grass, he is free for having merged everything with it. He remains ever identified with it. Yes. So munja grass is kind of like lemongrass. It's got sheets. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. It's like a green onion. Same idea. So the person who is diligent, and who endeavors to withdraw his attachment and identification. Any form of self. This is the methodology. Why is this important? We tend to know in two fundamental ways. Most of the things we know in the world are by compare and contrast. To know that that's a table, you have to also know that it's not a chair. A chair is something different from a table. That's how you kind of get the sense. That's a table, this is a chair. Compare and contrast. We Pay attention to the distinctions between external objects. But there is another way of knowing, and that is the methodology of distillation. So if I have three glasses of water, this one has red food coloring. This one has blue food coloring. This one has yellow food coloring. And what I want to know is, what is the color of pure water? What must I do? I must remove from the water everything that is not water. So I get out my zero filter and I take the red glass of water with red food coloring, pour it in. Wow, it's clear. Set that aside. Take the glass of blue colored water, pour it in. Oh. It's clear. Same with the yellow. Pure water is colorless. It's not red, blue, or yellow. The methodology of distillation. This is from Michael. So, Theologically, there's the via negativa. Did you hear, study that? A little bit, yeah. The negation of everything that is not God. This is the process. We cannot know the self by compare and contrast. Why? When have you ever not been you? None of us have ever had an experience of unself. It's always there. So we know it through the process of distillation. 
we remove from our attention, we remove from our identification everything that is removable and see what the remnant is, what the residual is, what's left over. It's a simple process. All right, next verse. Negation of the five koshas. Annamaya kosha, fuchi. Annamaya kosha. Deho, deho yamanna bhavano na mayastu kosha shchanena jivati vinashyati tadvihinaha. Tvakcharma maam sarudhira asthi purisha purisha. Rashir Nayam Swayam Bhavitumarhati Nitya Shuddha. The body is a product of food. It constitutes the food sheath. It exists because of food and dies without it. It is a bundle of skin, flesh, blood, bones, and filth. Never can it be the self existing, the eternally pure Atman. So Anam means cooked rice in Sanskrit. So the Annamaya Kosha is the sheath Kosha Maya comprised of food. So this is what the physical body is. It is a food tube. You spend your 70, 80, 90 years consuming a mountain of food and producing a mountain of poop. We munch our way to the grave. What the physical body does. Without food, it dies. Skin, muscle, fat, Bone, blood, mucus, filled with feces and urine. What the body is. That it's pretty disgusting without an enormous amount of care. <laughs> Just don't bathe it or wipe it for a couple of weeks. Mm. Pretty gross. That's called a gross body, I think. <laughs> so this is the first sheath, the Annamayakosha, the food tube. Now, there's several other verses on this kosha, but we don't have time to go into them. So we'll pick up our discussion of the food tube next week. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om